Today on Knife Panner, we're talking about American Made Fixed Blades, and I may have locked Zach in a closet. Okay guys, that was funny for a few hours, ha ha. Let me out now. Let's talk knives? Hello? What's up guys? Happy 4th of July. Hope you guys are having so much fun. We've got some awesome knives that we're gonna celebrate 4th of July with. Some American made fixed blades. We've got some great brands. I have some knives. Jamie's here with me. He's got some knives. And let's just get jumping right into this thing. Jamie's got the first knife. What you got, Jamie? Okay, so I don't think it's any surprise to anybody that we're gonna start with Benchmade. So, Benchmade, I have the Benchmade Leku. Uh, this is, I think, my adventure knife for the past month. Ever since we did that uh, ASMR camping video, I've had this on my hip, and I've enjoyed it eventually. So whenever I get out um, on the weekend or whatever. Which is often. Guys, I'm telling you, Jamie works his butt off all week, so he can be like, as soon as he leaves on Friday, he's going out into the wilderness somewhere. You know, I try, I try sometimes, but anyway. So this has been on my hip for probably the past month or so, and I've really been enjoying it. It's got a CPM 3V blade, overall length coming in at 9.69 inches. Uh, the blade itself is 5.2 inches uh, with a drop point configuration. Um, like I said, I've been really enjoying it. Um, the handle, which Benchmade says has been designed to have zero hotspots. I'm not sure if zero hotspots is like, completely okay. accurate. There might be a little marketing fluff in there, but okay. it is an extremely comfortable uh, injection molded handle that I've been enjoying a lot. Um, and comes with this fantastic sheath. Uh, some people like it, some people don't. Um, I've been really enjoying the dangler portion of it, as well as the fire steel loops. So if you I get- I gotta be honest, that's the worst name for any <laughs> part of a sheath. It's the worst name, but it is the best feature. because it, it just, really is. It gets out of the way so easily. So if you have it uh, just with the belt loop without the dangler, uh, it can tend to be kind of rigid on your hip. Um, when Especially I get in- Especially if you're getting in and out of a truck, well, right? That's what I'm just gonna, it was just gonna say. So if I'm getting in and out of my truck um, and this is rigid, it's poking into my seat, it's poking into you know the back part right. of my seat. Um, with a dangler, I can kind of just scoop it up out of the way, put my seat belt on, and it's ready to rock. So really enjoying the dangler. Uh, and then I have an Exotech fire steel that I put in here. So I have uh, the knife and the, the fire steel. It makes a nice little fire kit slash knife to have on your hip. So this is the Benchmade Leku. Um, of course, Benchmade makes a ton of other fixed blades. Um, there's a lot of good fixed blades in the Hunt series, um, right. as well as kind of their, their black line, their tactical, uh, more tactical applications. But Leku, great knife, Benchmade. That's knife number one. Kurt, you have knife number two. <clears throat> I have knife number two, and knife number two is an SE knife. They come out of Idaho Falls, Idaho. Now. I don't know if y'all have seen my knife collection or not, but I have a well-loved SE3 in my Carta. When they came out with the S35VN blade, I was like, oh, I want that. I am still tempted to get this, swap my Micarta scales on it because I love my patina on my Micarta. Right. Like you were saying earlier that um, you really like the contoured portion of the handles, but not right. so much the G10. Yeah, yeah, this G10, I think the contoured handles is a huge plus. That's something that SE should have done, I think a while ago, long while ago. Um, but yeah, the G10, it's got nice milling, but it, the grooves are a little smooth, a little mm -hmm. bit too smooth almost. I can see that. I suppose it's kind of just like, you know, different, different structure, different folks type of thing. Um, it's interesting that SE has started um, making some knives in S35, because when you think of SE, they're kind of like that hardcore survivalist, like 1095 powder coat right. type thing. Um, but it's interesting to see them kind of come out with some stuff that's kind of more your modern powdered stainless steel. Um, and, you know, 1095 potentially tougher, S35 you have your stainless aspect. So. Um, you have different applications for it. Uh, we were talking to Patrick at, at SHOT Show, um, and he said he was really liking it, and he was kind of just relating the same thing, that they're just, they're just for different applications, so. Right, another thing cool about SE is, me and Jamie were talking before we started, and their crew 
spend over 100 days a year out in the field testing their knives, trying new products, seeing what they like, what they don't like, basically beating the tar out of everything that they've beat, they've built until they are like, okay, let's put this on the product line. I you think, um, I can't remember if they put it on Instagram or Facebook or something. Um, they actually broke one of their S35 uh, blades, but like they're completely transparent. Like, okay, this is what this is good for. This is what it's not good for. So like, it's definitely not as tough as a 1095, but it is good for, you know, these other applications. So I, I like the transparency that SE is giving um, through kind of their QC Process. So don't pry open any car hoods. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> Have you ever been walking down the street and you passed a car and you're like, man, I really wish I could cut through the hood of that car? Uh, every day? I have the knife for you. This is the Winkler belt knife. And the reason why this is cool uh, well, for one, it's Winkler, so you have, have that. But uh, this is an 80 CRV2 knife. An 80 CRV2 is an extremely tough steel. It's brutally tough, um, depending on how you treat, heat treat it. So if you heat treat it correctly, this will withstand some crazy abuse. This particular knife has an overall length of 9.25 inches, blade length of 4.875, um, and of course, it's 80 CRV2 with a clip point configuration. Um, Winkler has kind of a uh, reputation for making crazy tough knives, and this one is no exception. Um, I, I remember seeing, I saw some Winkler videos a while back, and they were literally like, like stabbing bricks and car hoods and chop it, like oh literally chopping gosh. metal and like other pieces of metal in half with their, their knives. Uh, they also come with these, I guess they're kind of hybrid type sheaths. They're very, they're made out of leather, but they also have some interesting mounting options with belt clips. They have uh, screw points here where you could, I'm sure, mount anything like a, like a tech lock or things of that nature. So right. if you need to mount it somewhere else, uh, there's an option for that too. So uh, very high quality knife, very high quality sheath. Winkler uh, comes out of, uh, they're in North Carolina. That particular knife goes for $365 on the website. Um, so yeah, there's a Winkler, uh, Winkler belt knife for you. That's awesome. All right guys, up next, I have a White River Hunter fixed blade. Now these come out of Fremont, Michigan. It's kind of a family owned operated little uh, knife manufacturing company, but they do exceptional quality. These knives are gorgeous. S35 VN steel, it's a drop point blade. This burlap micarta is the smoothest burlap micarta I've ever felt in my entire life. Oh, it's so beautiful. And the, the handle is really shaped and contoured. Uh, that fits the Christmas hams like a glove. Yeah, I think White River is definitely known for the FC5, FC, well, the FC series, I guess. Right. Um, so there's a bunch of different models of that. So if you haven't seen our Montana Adventure video, we have some uh, Firecraft series knives in there, so you should check that out. But uh, yeah, I, th I don't think any that knife is, as far as fit and finish wise, any different than the Firecraft series knives. They're all fantastic. Right. And you can get this on the site for $180. $180, nice. Next up, we have a Microtech SOCOM Alpha. Microtech is based out of North Carolina. Um, and this is an interesting knife because you see, you think of Microtech, you think OTFs, automatics, that type of thing, right? Folding knives, like good, good OTFs. Um, so this is uh, something they have in the fixed blade line. So it is um, 10.5 inches overall, blade length of 5.375 inches. It has a CTS 204P blade. So for people that aren't in the know, um, that's basically the same thing as M390 or 20CV. Um, it's just Carpenter's uh, version of it. Um, and then it's got G10 handles. Um, it has an interesting kind of profile here where it's not completely straight. It almost has like a boomerang, like a slight boomerang shape to it. Okay. Um, so that's kind of a cool feature. Um, I guess if you think of like how crookeries work. Um, it has hackability. <laughs> something like that. That um, should be a term. If that's not a term, make it a term. 
think of this as maybe like a just a very, very slight crookery esque knife. Um, it also has some interesting jimping. So normally you would have kind of thumb ramp jimping and maybe jimping up here on the blade. But this has jimping all the way around um, on the handle. So it is a very grippy knife. Um, it has this finger troil that locks your hand in as well as that thumb ramp there. It also has this area where you can put your thumb. So if you're doing draw cuts, you need to pull backwards. Um, there's also an option to put your thumb up here and give you, you know, even better grip in that situation. So Microtech SOCOM Alpha, interesting design. Um, also comes with this sheath. And I think this sheath is one of the better Kydex sheaths that I've seen. It's got a very satisfying clicky action. So the retention on it is fantastic, but it's not extremely hard to pull out. And then you also have this, I don't think it's a tech lock, but I think it's a tech lock-esque um, type lock. So Microtech Socom Alpha fixed blade. Interesting thing for Microtech. That, that definitely is. Next knife up actually, Portland, Oregon. And it's also a tactical-esque knife. This is the Gerber Strong Arm. This one is the half serrated version. This is a 420 steel. I'm telling you right now, this thing's a workhorse. And there are a lot of people out there that are absolutely in love with this knife. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. The sheath, I think, is where you get your options. Yeah. You know what I mean? For sure. Uh, it's an ambidextrous sheath. It can go left or right. Um, and this thing is actually really cool. It has this system that you can pull apart and you can attach it to belt or a mole strap or literally yeah. you can configure this to strap it to anything. And that's, that's Tim Kennedy's knife of choice, man. I know, man. You got to respect Tim Kennedy. And this, so, okay, long time ago, I had a Bear Grylls Gerber fixed blade and <laughs> yes. it was very similar to this. <laughs> And yes, that was a long time ago. This thing is cool. It fits my hand so well. I would say out of any knife on my end of the table, you're not gonna get this knife out of my hands. Like it's gonna take quite a bit to get this knife out of my hand. Sure, I think that's one thing that I noticed about that knife too when I put it in my hand is it's extremely comfortable and it's very form fitting to your hand. Um, this one comes in at 70 bucks. Yeah, it's hard to beat just the, the amount of options you have to mount it, the quality, and then of course the price. Uh, it's hard to beat the Gerber Strong Arm. Plus listen to that click. Mm. Yes. That's a good one. That's what I'm talking about. Gerber Strong Arm. Okay, my last knife. Um, so I have one from Bark River. Bark River is be based in Escanaba, Michigan. Um, and Bark River, definitely known for making some high quality bushcrafting, survival, outdoor knives. Um, and of course, this is no, no exception. Um, so this is the Bark River Fox River. Uh, comes in an overall length of 8.375 inches, blade length of four inches, CPM 3V blade. Um, and then of course the handle material here is kind of this polished micarta. And we were talking about this before we started shooting. Do you prefer like a polished micarta or do you prefer a more grippy kind of less shiny micarta? I really enjoy the patina that comes from natural, non-coated, non-polished. I this is kind of gross to say, but I like the like grit that gets in there and the nastiness, and yeah. I, it looks really cool. And I I don't know, like I'm sure there's blood and some DNA or something in mine. <laughs> I don't know. It's a lie. But I I personally I prefer in my hand a non-polished micarta, but I do love the look of the polished micarta. Right. It's very pretty. Yeah, this definitely has an aesthetic to it. Um, and, and this is pretty common among a lot of Bark Rivers is you get this polished micarta. Uh, the other thing cool about Bark Rivers is they, I'm gonna say all, but I'm sure there's like some fringe case somewhere, but basically all of their knives come with a convex grime and they come extremely sharp out of the box. Um, that's one thing that I've noticed um, out of Bark Rivers is not a lot of companies will put a convex grind on a knife. Uh, Bark River does, so that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, also comes with this sheath. Um, I'll have to say, I think you need to break in this sheath uh, a little bit before it's good. Like, I feel like the leather quality is good, but it comes a little stiff out of the box. So be forewarned. Um, at least if you get the sheath on the uh, Fox River, 
uh, it's a little stiff. So maybe you get some like baseball glove conditioner or something. And, hey, and that stuff works. I've used it before on other sheaths. Yeah, so um, you definitely you definitely can uh, do some work there, or you know just wear it and it'll definitely break in. So uh, it has an option for belt carry. Uh, it just slides in and covers probably three quarters of the handle, like so. So that's the Bark River. Fox River comes in at two nineteen ninety five, so not a bad price for the materials and the quality you're getting right. out of a fixed blade. So yeah, I really love the leather that they produce. Every time we get a new knife in from them, I always go out on the shelf and I open the box and I'm like, oh, that's yeah. nice. <laughs> All right, guys, last up for me, I have a Topps Mini Scandi. Now this thing is pretty cool. I'm gonna put this on my neck. You can wear it as a neck knife. Oh, hang on, <laughs> wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute. Got it. This thing's cool. Okay, Yukon, Idaho, they're real close to Idaho Falls. Topps is a cool company, they build these rough, rugged knives that just, honestly, even for this little neck knife, it's not any different. 1095 steel, um, the micarta that they use is great. It has really good feel to it. This is a natural, it's like open micarta. Non-polished polished, micarta. Non-polished. You got yourself a lanyard hold there. Um, one thing, I wish, so okay, the blade length is 2.75 inches. I wish that the handle was a quarter inch or maybe even a half inch longer. It fits really good in the hams, but I wish I had a little leverage. My It's almost like my pinky's trying to get leverage off the nub on the end. But other than that, the jimping is great. I've been trying to find the perfect, for me, a small fixed blade that I can carry every day and not have it drive me crazy. And I was looking at these and it, I couldn't do it just because of the nub, but for somebody else's hand, this is a great knife. Yeah, so you actually ended up going with a slightly different tops knife, right? Right, I went with the street scalpel. Mm -hmm. And so does that fit your hand better then? It does, it does. Okay. Yeah. Another thing on that too, you mentioned earlier was it's clear Cerakoted, right? Oh yeah, yeah, They it's got a clear Cerakote. It basically, the whole reason why you'd Cerakote a knife is to add corrosion resistance to it. it gives it a protective layer, mm -hmm. which is cool because a lot of times you can't get the satin or the metal look because a lot of them are powder coated. Right. Um, but with this, the clear Cerakote, you get the uh, option of a, a clean blade. And that's a really cool. 1095 blade, correct? Yep, 1095. So yeah, 1095, probably nice to have that clear Cerakote for some corrosion resistance. Right. You can get this one. This is second less expensive. It is $75 on the website. Mini Scandi. Cool. Well, that's it. Did we do it, man? We finished. Awesome. We got through all of them. Uh, yeah, I don't know how to end one of these. The Marabosure. Oh, hey guys. Uh, I guess this was a video. Uh, hope it was good. Make sure to subscribe for more nice stuff. Check out bladeshq.com, and there's probably a playlist somewhere down here. Now I'm gonna go find Kurt. Fourth of July. <laughs>